right, now that I have the proper fitting, which I was missing the other day to be able to do a compression test uh, on this motor, I have all the plugs out on the back, have all the coils and uh, plugs out here, and to disarm the ignition so that we can turn it over and not create an ignition problem, we're going to put the boat into drown mode. Uh, with this ECM uh, on this motor, all you have to do to get into drown mode, which disarms the ignition and the fuel system, is just simply hold the throttle open all the way for just a second, and now we're in that disengage mode where the uh, ignition system won't be building up that excess voltage, which is always a problem for electronics. Remember, either disengage your ignition system or ground out all the plugs whenever you're doing an ignition or rather a compression test on any motor. So we are into plug number one. You can see we're at zero. I have it in drown mode. Now we're gonna turn it over. Okay, that's just a little over 120 pounds. Just wanna disengage the gauge. That beeping is the ECM going out of drown mode. There we go. Okay, we're at zero. In the drown mode. Right at 120 again. Zero in the drown mode. And we're right at 120 pounds again. So the cylinders all are even. Uh, remember, it's not even what your gauge reads when you're doing a compression test on a multi cylinder motor, it is how even is the compression between the cylinders and the reason is that gauges are different from each other and they can read different pressures but if you have a problem uh, it'll show up because the pressure in one cylinder will be more than 10 percent off the pressure in the other cylinder so this one's fine of course that's expected uh, with only 85 hours um, another thing that i want to mention i didn't the other day uh, indicate how the ballast tanks are filled these are the drains for the ballast tank. Uh, if you want to run fluid water, I guess I should say, in the ballast tanks, you simply screw in the plug so that they're watertight. And their tubes, this is the swim ladder by the way, there are tubes down here which are connected uh, to the jet pump which allows water to come up into the ballast tanks. Now when you remove the ballast tanks, these are quick disconnect fittings. You simply slide back the collar and you can pull them loose to put them back on. You just stick them in there and let that collar come back and they're locked in. Now, your valves are right here and here. Two tanks, two valves. Right now they're in the closed position and that keeps water from coming into the tanks. If you want to fill the tanks up, you simply open up the valve and then the jet pump is pushing water up into the tanks until they're full. And that is how you add weight to the back. Uh, to drain that weight, pull the plugs. And there you have it. As I'm putting it back together, I realized that I didn't mention in that uh, segment a moment ago, I didn't mention the ab absolute pressure on the uh, readings. 120 pounds may seem a little bit low for a four stroke, but remember that the compression ratio on this motor is only 8.4 to 1 because it is supercharged. 
the normally aspirated version of this motor, which has 155 horsepower, has a 10.4 to 1 compression because it does not have a supercharger. And so the absolute pressure readings are going to be a lot higher on that motor. So because this is supercharged, it runs a lower compression ratio. But when the motor's running and the supercharger is packing air into the motor, it actually is as if it was... Uh, a much much higher compression ratio. You'll notice that all supercharged and turbocharged motors have lower compression ratios for that reason. Okay, I've got it all back together now. Just want to make sure that it all went back together right. Remember, don't put one of these in the drown mode when you're trying to crank it up. Just let the computer do its job. Put in the key. And there you have it.